All right, guys, I've been meaning to do this video for like two weeks now, but here we are. Officially, as of January 17th, I have owned the Freedom Factory for three years. So January 17th, 2020 is when I actually took the keys to the Freedom Factory. So, and I have some photos from that day. Like here is the ring of keys that I was given at closing. And I remember I was wearing, you know, a t-shirt and khaki shorts, just like I do every day. And I was in a room, you know, full of a bunch of people in suits. And I just thought that was interesting. Drove White Buffalo straight to the track. And I just remember looking at the place and I was like, what have I gotten myself into? And it has been a <laughs> really interesting deal. You know, when I bought the track, I had this whole plan of how I was gonna spend you know, this much money to get the track to a point where it'd be open and operational and then it would hopefully make enough money to support itself basically within three months. The payment on the track is like $17,000 a month. So to make that much money plus pay the payroll, you know, property insurance and you know, just cover everything and then make a little bit Boy, was I wrong on my calculations. You know, right when I got the track, obviously COVID hit, so that was crazy. And thankfully the pay-per-view saved everything. I don't think I ever would have had enough money to make the Freedom Factory what it is today if we didn't have the first ever Freedom 500. I don't know what the track would be without the pay-per-views. The pay-per-views saved everything. I mean, the shop would have continued, but the Freedom Factory would be nothing. I mean, we wouldn't have bleachers that are aluminum. We wouldn't have light poles. We wouldn't have a lot of things without the pay-per-view. So I think about that a lot. It's been a, it's been an interesting three years. I mean, it's been incredible. I can't imagine my life without the Freedom Factory. It's like my favorite place in the world. And now, just recently, it has reached a point where it is completely self-sustaining. You know, it took a little more than the three months I had planned. But now, that bad unit makes its own money, which is crazy to think. But, uh, it, you know, it's just killing it. Like, this year, you know, we had a packed out circle track race for the Sportsman Series. I did no promoting for that event. We just had Sport Compacts this last weekend, which my clutch exploded in my car. So I, I'll show you guys some videos of that on the main channel. That did really good, you know, Didn't I didn't promote that event either. And then we have another event that's not mine coming up. We have the Tour of Destruction on March 10th and 11th, which I'm thinking is gonna completely sell out the Freedom Factory. And the Tour of Destruction is a very well-known event. That's not a Cletus event. I'll be in it, you know, ripping a school bus, but I won't be putting on that event. So that's three events this year alone that I'm not even doing. The Freedom Factory is hosting them. And Josh and Alec and Adam and Tyler at the Freedom Factory, they're just killing it. So two and three years ago, you know, I was the track owner, like very many track owners around the country that are ripping their hair out, just stressed out to the maximum during an event. And some of the reasons that, you know, you end up pulling your hair out in this business is there's so many unforeseen things that can happen, whether it's dealing with Karens, you're dealing with you know, high tense situations. You have a lot of people there very excited for something. And if just one thing goes wrong, it can cause a very big chain of events that can just crush everything. And, you know, and a lot of that stress comes down to just how prepared you are, which now we're more prepared. But back in the day, you know, you've got whatever, four, 5,000 tickets sold out, right? You got all these people so fired up to get there and then boom, septic system overflows or Boom, internet goes down, pay-per-views down. It is just incredible how many things can go wrong in one day. And when you're new at it, it's really freaking hard because you just don't know what it could be that day. And the Freedom Factory was in such bad shape when we got it. Even though we had kind of been doing events for a couple of years, we just weren't prepared enough to do the things we were doing. We were sending it. We had the stands full and we were holding on by a thread to make those events work, you know? Now we're in a different position and our events run a lot better, but that's not for the lack of losing a lot of sleep and putting some years on me worth of stress, but we're good now. And now that we've made it to this point where I'm literally just chilling out, working on my car, 
going up, grabbing food, whatever, having fun, talking to people, it's by far the most amazing feeling. It's almost as good of a feeling as when I first bought the track and told you guys about it because it went from super excited about the track to having to work so hard to just even make sure we were gonna be able to keep the track to now enjoying the track for just what it is and it operating to this now, you know, really impressive level. I think we run one of the best tracks in the country and I can say that wholeheartedly because clean bathrooms, good food, good people. I think we have one of the best safety teams in the country as far as circle track goes. I mean, we are doing this to the best level we can. I feel like it's Disney on ice for race cars. We are not cutting any corners and that's just been a really good feeling for me. So like I made that thumbnail because it did age me. I was pulling my hair out for years, but now the Freedom Factory's reached a level where it does its own thing and I can be relaxed and enjoy being there. And that's, that's been amazing. So three years it took, but here we are, 2023 has been amazing so far. So, all right, so on top of all this, I just wanna to touch on some of our schedule going into this year. For our next Cletus event of the year, we have three big events here in a row. We got the Freedom 500, March 31st. We have the Freedom 500 that night, Friday, and then Saturday, April 1st, we have Cletus and Cars, and tickets are now available for that. And you already know, it's the Freedom 500, so it's sponsored by our boys at Summit Racing Equipment. Then we have the Danger Ranger on Dirt at Bristol. April 22nd, we have rented Bristol again, and we are racing 44 Rangers on dirt, but we're letting in like 80 Ford Rangers into the race. So if you wanna race your Ford Ranger, and you can do it on dirt at Bristol. So the Danger Ranger on dirt is presented by Bully Dog. You guys have seen their truck tuning stuff. We also have Nitto Tire presenting the Danger Ranger on dirt. And we have a road active suspension, which is a really cool company that I just kind of learned about that essentially turns a leaf spring into active suspension. So you should really check out uh, their stuff, Bully Dog, Road Active Suspension, and Nitto Tire. And if you guys want to sign up with your Ford Ranger, you're more than welcome. Come race with us. We're letting in a ton of trucks. The link's in the description to sign up for that. We are upgrading the roll cages, so they're a little bit safer, bigger track, but it's on dirt, so it's a little bit slower. I might even buy myself a four-wheel drive truck get a little bit of an advantage there, you know what I mean? But as far as other regular Cletus events go, we have the May 6th and 7th Indy 800 and Cletus and Cars at Indy. And we got Heatwave Visual sponsoring Cletus and Cars Indy, which is very exciting. And then September 2nd and 3rd, we have the Bristol 1000 and Cletus and Cars, which was just incredible last year. October 14th at the Freedom Factory, we have the regular Danger Ranger 9000. Then November 17th and 18th, we have the 2.4 hours of Lay Mullets and Cleats and Cars at the Freedom Factory. And then December 21st, we have the Christmas Tree Drags at Bradenton Motorsports Park. So there's only a few of these events that there's already tickets on sale for, and that would be Tour of Destruction, the Freedom 500, Danger Ranger on Dirt, and the Indy 800. The rest of the events are too far into the year to have tickets on sale yet. But that's our 2023 schedule for the most part for Cletus events. So I wanted to bring you guys up to date. Check out the description for more information. Guys, overall, we got an amazing year planned. I'm really excited for Tour of Destruction and Danger Ranger on Dirt, though. Those are my two that are sticking out to me that I cannot wait for. So guys, don't miss out on all these events. Check out the links. See if you can get tickets to come or if you want to participate in one of them. You can also check that out, too. Bring out your Rangers. Come on. Thanks for meeting me today on the second channel. We'll freaking see you later.